All right, recording has started. Welcome everybody. Uh, this is Wednesday, August 5th, uh, the Aperio Teaching and Learning Call. Uh, my name is Trisha Gordon. I'm facilitating our session today. And uh, we're gonna have a Jira Palooza. Woo um, looks like Tiffany has added a ton of Jiras for us and hopefully we can get through them. Uh, but as you know, they, they often take a little longer than we think they will. And that's okay. It's good to, to take our time and, and uh, capture the important um, ideas and preferences that we have. Um, so let's see. Um, let's start out with any announcements uh, or other updates that folks might have. I see Adrian has posted that there's a quick preview of Sakai 21 dashboard's current state. Adrian, where can we find that on Nightly? Nightly 2? Um, no, 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 you, you can't. It's, it's not on a Nightly. I mean, I was just thinking that maybe I could just do a quick demo if people are interested. Well, oh. in fact, uh, what, what I want to do is I just want to show, I want to show the group um, this kind of status widget that I'm really unsure about what you know what should be in it. So I wanted to ask the group. So I don't want to hijack the meeting, but maybe just just five minutes just sure. so I, I can I can share and just show you that and then absolutely. Let me give you some presenter privileges and we'll let you go ahead and do that and also just check in and see if there are any other um any other So, Trisha, this is you know, probably Sorry. worth noting that we're, you know, a week and a half away from the feature freeze date for Sakai 21. So the, the freeze date is Friday, August 14th, uh, which is giving Adrian all kinds of gray hair. Uh -oh. but, uh, you know, so we're, we're we're on track to freeze at the time when we expected. And uh, what date we're it was? Uh, Friday, August 14th. Oh, I think, uh, Charles, you and I are playing dueling banjos here. You win. Oh, that's okay. Um, I'm, I'll let you, how about I let you take the notes while I'm facilitating the rest of the meeting. Thank you. Fair enough. <laughs> Thanks. That's great. I appreciate it. Um, great, Josh. I think that's wonderful news and also scary for anybody who's trying to desperately get stuff ready for that. Shall I, uh, shall uh, I go so ahead then? In, yes, go right ahead, Adrian. Yeah, cool. Right. Okay, so can you all see my screen? Yes. Great stuff, right. So this this is this is this is the course dashboard, right? So um Again, this is this is from the from the designs that Bridget and uh, worked on, and now Chanel's working on. Yeah, um, the thing I wanted to ask, the, well, I'll, I'll, quick, I'll quickly show you this, right? So, so basically, I've I've implemented some kind of uh, editing stuff, right, for this in in place editing. Yeah, and this is a new dashboard that we're looking. Yes, at. Yes. Right? This, this is the course dashboard view, right? So there's kind of two okay. dashboard views. There's, there's the home dashboard and there's the course dashboard, right? So this is this is the course dashboard. Okay. So in the in the home dashboard, you can you can move all these widgets around as, as freely as you want, right? Because it's your home dashboard. But the the course dashboard that's locked down to the instructor. Yeah. So if you basically click this button up here, edit dashboard, some things have changed, right? You've got drag handles. On the widgets now, you've got yeah. this, button, this button here: change course image, and you've got an in-place editor on your, you know, like um, course overview thing, right? Like a CK editor in, in there. You just you just click on it, and you've got it. Yeah, um, you can change the course image, and you, know, you can kind of zoom on, in on this and all that stuff, and change nice. that. Um. But the thing, so yeah, that's, and then you, you just save that, right? And then all, all your kind of the course dashboard information will go back and it gets stored in the various 
site info places, the stuff we usually have things, right? So all of the course, all of the site editing things you can still do from the places you're used to doing it as well. I'm not, I've not implemented different APIs at the back or changed the way the tools work. All the tools work exactly the same. This will just secrete the data back where it's supposed to go, right? And all's good, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But the thing, the thing I'm having problems with, right, is 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 this, right? This this thing I'm calling like the status widget, right? And uh, it's it's the thing that's had the least um, attention during the focus groups, right? This this kind of widget. Nobody's really had a good idea how to kind of approach it. What what should be in it and stuff. So, I mean, so we've got this thing forum messages. Right? So that's that's kind of obvious, right? That's that, that that's the only bit that is the clearest to me, right? This pending submissions, this terminology yeah. ca came from the designer, right? Pending submissions. I'm kind of assuming that's gonna be like assignments, right? So you've got you've got seven assignments that you need to grade, right? If if you're if you're an instructor, you've got seven assignments that everybody's submitted or it's past the due date or something like that, right? Active quizzes, I'm not too sure. This is mocked up data. So what I wanted to do was to ask, just ask the people on the call. And I'll do the same in the UX call as well. Um, this is supposed to be like a snapshot of your course, right? That's the idea. So if I click edit dashboard and I hide the header, I'm hiding all that image stuff, right? But I'm still leaving that there, right? Yeah. So this, this is the thing. You'd see your tools down the left. You'd see your sites along the top, right? And you'd see this. Mm -hmm. So my question is, my question to the group is this, right? what would be what would be good to have in there from an instructor's perspective so it's first thing you see you think right okay this course is healthy or unhealthy or i have things to do that kind of stuff those kinds of ideas anything could go in this they've got to be small they've got yeah. a number on them right but other than that what kind of information would you like to have in there well, you can go in. A, a clarifying question right so the, the instructor is setting up the dashboard for the course but yep. is the dashboard, the course dashboard meant to be primarily consumed by students? So in, in other words, is this the instructor making decisions about what he or she would be presenting for students or is this meant to be presented to the instructor? Both, both. It'll, it'll, it'll change depending on the, on, on the uh, role of the person that's come in, right? So uh, whatever, whatever their role is, the permissions on it, the view will change so it can be both basically you know this this status panel could be for a student's consumption or an instructor's consumption it can be either of those things but yeah those editing functions i just showed you obviously that's that's an instructor so they go in like um maybe they just want to use the course overview functionality like they currently do to to, to put a lot the, the synopsis of the course in there right and it's in that case they've got the editor mm -hmm. they might want to they might want to hide that image they might not have an image they want to put on there right so they can hide that away and stuff but so that that's obviously instructor functionality or that stuff, but but yeah, these views can be for either a student or an instructor. You know, all these all these components on here will be for either. Uh, but both roles will see them. So I think uh, that's interesting. Um, it's it's hard to understand if pending submissions. I mean, we understand that that is tied to assignments. It probably should say assignments, a pending assignment submissions. But does that mean there's one assignment that's waiting for seven more submissions? Or does that mean there are seven assignments? Yeah, well, this is it's the thing. Not it's, what that yeah. means. it's a blank slate because the, de the designer literally she went off and she just produced these graphics, right? Because she wanted some kind of a, you know, immediate feedback about the course there, right? So that that was it. She just produced these terms. She she produced the mock-up for it. It's a completely blank canvas at the minute. So, I, I mean, I think as an instructor, I would be horribly confused by pending submissions. I mean, I know that's the assignments tool icon. Instructors don't know what those icons are, I'm pretty sure, yeah. uh, most of the time. And um, and the tests and quizzes icon has already been um, discussed in some of the mailing lists as potential source of confusion because mm -hmm. the check mark uh, suggests a completed uh, piece of content, but it is not. Um, those are things that are upcoming yeah. or or soon to be due. Uh, so I think some more text is is probably needed there, um, like you know the tool name maybe or um, yeah, I, 
something clarifying to indicate what that is, because uh, as Terry points out in the chat, um, there are a lot of things that could be pending or due uh, from an instructor's perspective and from a student's perspective um, that are not assignments. You know, quizzes could, there could be things in the test and quizzes tool that are assignments. There could be forum requirements for posting that yeah. are due, but you know, that's, that's not the same thing. So I think, you know, maybe if we say new forum messages or unread forum messages and, um, you know, I, I don't know, active seems like a, a problematic term for quizzes because even though that means they're ones that are currently open to take, I, I think that's, yeah, that might be confusing. Um, I don't know, maybe another word or two for each of those. Also, yeah. I'm Adrian. I'm, you know, <laughs> it. Is there a link from any of these to take you to see more, what what those things are, you know, um, that that could be useful. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. Is the point of this to be a to do list, or a to done list? <laughs> I have no idea. That's why I'm here. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we can we can just get rid of the thing, right? If if we can't really if we can't really work out what the use of it. I mean, so like you've got you've got the announcements widget down here, right? Which is which is going to be course specific when you drop into a course, and you've got the forums widget down here, which will just show things for the course, you know, the course site that you're in. So you you have these snapshots of data in these widgets. So Maybe this thing is just superfluous, you know, until well, we can actually... what about the f using it in conjunction or not using it, but using the calendar? Because if you've got those pending submissions on the calendar, those are going to show up on the calendar that Saturday these things are due or yeah. whatever. So it may be um, redundant if you put in there the function of the calendar and you've already got the things about forums and, and that kind of thing. Yeah, right. Yeah. So yes, I mean the calendar is one of the widgets you can you can drop in here as well. So um, right, which I think is underutilized because again, especially when it shows up mm -hmm. combining multiple course calendars, then a student or an instructor can see what's coming up this month, this week, tomorrow, whatever. Yeah, right. But, uh, uh, so this is in a course dashboard, and it does. <clears throat> I know you don't know, Adrian. But my question <laughs> is: This supposed to be, uh, you know, th over all of your courses, or just the current site? Current current site. So there's a there's a, there's a home <laughs> version of it, um, which is, you know, let's go refresh storybook. Uh, there could be items that are not published that should be published, and that could be a valuable reminder to a teacher. Oh yeah, I've got to open this lesson page, or I've got to you know, start this quiz or something that they've left unpublished. Well, I mean, that, 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 that was the intent as, as we think about this. I mean, just to say, all right, you know, what are what are some data points that would be useful and actionable for instructors that could be presented in uh, in, in super brief or, or likewise, what are some what are some data points for students that would be actionable? You know, a lot of ways there's there's so much in Sakai, but a lot of it is sort of hidden under layers. So, you know, what could we what can we surface this way that would make a difference for people? A progress bar that you are so much through this quiz or, you know, you've finished this many, this much of your lesson page or Well, pro progress bars are problematic for accessibility. Sure. So mm -hmm. I, I'm concerned about too much with the progress bars. We already have that problem in assignments with the addition of that progress bar. Um, and I don't know how helpful it would be to have a, an overall course progress bar because that could be totally meaningless depending on what the content of the course is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if an instructor has the entire grade basically do, you know, a midterm and a final and we haven't had those yet, then your course progress will be zero through the entire semester until you get right. to the end pretty much. Yeah, that was why the question mark when I suggested a progress bar, that's the only thing I could come up with. I mean, for, for sure, we have heard okay. students in lots of settings say, um, help me stay on track, you know, present me information that helps me understand how on track I am in yeah. this course and across my courses. But you know, the question is how best to do that. 
So, so I think from a student perspective, so things that are upcoming that are due would be useful. I think from the instructor standpoint, um, new forum posts, new submission, new assignment submissions or mm -hmm. test quizzes submissions would be useful information. Yeah. So essentially yeah. either stuff undone, various versions of stuff undone, right? So stuff ungraded, stuff unsubmitted, right? No, right. not unsubmitted, just unseen. Well, yeah. These well, are unseen. things that have for, been submitted. For a student, unsubmitted is what they're going to want to see. Right. What's coming what's, right. what's yeah. coming up due. Or maybe things that have just been graded and, and released to me. But from the instructor right. point of view, I want to see what the new stuff that the students have done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let yeah, me so just what what, if, hold on. No, go on. Go on. Go on. Definitely. What about having um, for the student um, recently graded for, for things that have been just handed back or, you know, new new grades added um, and then the number uh, assignments due, quizzes due, assignments late, quizzes late that you have still available, <laughs> but when you submit it, it'll be marked late. Right. Um, I want to something I bring up every once in a while is the Title IV requirement for attendance and that there be activity every week in an online course. And I think it would be really helpful if the student could see the last date of attendance or last date of activity, LDA, whatever. I had that on an online program that I was in and it it was helpful to say, oh, it's been three days since I've been in here. I didn't real, you know, whatever. And uh, it seems to me like the information is there with the statistics and yeah. it would just be a matter of surfacing it and putting it in a little field. Yeah. The last yeah. time you were active in this course was three days ago. So that sounds like, I mean, so would you, would you want that? You want that on a course, on a course by course basis, basically. Right. right? Well, right. So, yeah. <laughs> So I mean, so if we go back to the if we go back to the course dashboard, right? I mean, that sounds to me that maybe that should be like an extra thing, maybe up here or something, you know, like a, just a statement, maybe, you know, mm -hmm. to because there'll be no yeah. icon with it, right? So it'd just be like a you could access. even put a little calendar if you want an icon. The icons are overrated to me. I, you know, I'm indifferent yeah, yeah. to them. Yeah, yeah, sure, right, right. So That's folks, a good idea. I would like to take a, a little vote here. I think this is great conversation and we can continue it. I'm totally okay with that. It's up to everybody on the call if we want to continue this conversation for a bit. And if we have time for our Jira Palooza, great. And if not, we'll we'll that's okay. Um we'll get back to it another time. But um so I just like to get a you know a <coughs> Plus one to continue this conversation in the chat, please. Or minus one if you would like to move on to Jira Palooza's. I think I think minus one because uh, what I'd like people to do is just maybe maybe put something on Slack tomorrow or, um, or in the in the list in you know, the Sakai user list or something. Let people think about it for a you know. Well, how about this, Adrian? It, if it's not too far away would could we now that we've been introduced to this and and can think about it um maybe we'll put this on the agenda for our next meeting to um dig into it kind of too late then though freeze day has gone <laughs> oh okay Quite, oh it, i thought it was september 14th no august august okay <laughs> well there you go um that well, yeah, we, 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 I mean, we can anyway. I mean, because like, I mean, so what, what I'll briefly show people, just really, really, really brief. I won't, I won't be long at all. What we're talking about <laughs> with the stuff that's due and things, we're kind of hopefully covering in this tasks, yeah, um, that's nice. task widget, right? And this, this, this functionality is in a, it's in its own tag, right? So we can, we can actually put this up in the header bar as well, right, next to the bullhorns or something, right? That'd so we can, nice. yeah, yeah. It'll be the same, you know, the actual same mm -hmm. functionality, but we can put it where we want on the screen, right, as well, yeah? So when you went into a course, you could still pull down your, um, you know, your tasks list from the top type thing, right? So maybe 
I'm, I'm saying that so that because I mean there's overlap between between this task widget and that kind of status panel thing from what people have been saying and what I've thought myself before as well. So yeah. Well, we can put the, we can put this on the agenda for next time still anyway, right? I mean, it, yeah, be, uh, I mean, it. I don't know if you can even turn this around really in just a couple of weeks or less. <laughs> maybe not. It, I, don't know. <laughs> and it, I mean, maybe you can. I, I know you're very talented, and but I'm just wondering if this is something we could add in a dot release. You know, come back to if it's not ready. Possibly, possibly. I mean. We know the score with dot releases. If there's enough support in the community for a feature and we can get some QA on it, then there's a good chance. So Right. So yeah, in two weeks, yeah, next next TL we can Do you want to? Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. That makes sense. Great. So, so what I what I may do then, what what I may do is I may I may just kind of hide this. Right for the uh, for the freeze date, this this kind of status panel thing, right? And uh, I may hide that for the for you know for the for the freeze. Uh, keep the code there, but just hide it basically, so it doesn't confuse people. And then mm -hmm. maybe re yeah, does that make that makes does that make sense? Yes, it does to me. Yeah, it's contentious. Let's, let's put it that way. It is. It's obviously contentious, and that's why I wanted to talk about it today. So thank mm -hmm. you, everybody. Well, one other you. thing that uh, that would be helpful, I think, to students for online courses, and I don't know how to do this. It might need to be done with the LTI providers, but some way to uh, know when class is coming next or or a meeting is coming next that's coming from a tool like Zoom or yeah. uh, or Big Blue Button or something like that. Schedule yes. uh, events in in LTIs. Couldn't that go into the calendar as well? <clears throat> well, it depends. Not, not uh, automatically, but yeah, automatically it could be so. added by the instructor. Yeah. I mean, uh, serious. I mean, is there a way to plug that into the calendar so that if it's coming from a vendor like Zoom or whatever, that it that it feeds into the calendar? I don't think there's any LTI support for that, Terry. But... Mm, that's too bad. No. Oh yeah, well. With LTI two, uh, there potentially was you could have you could have written that kind of uh, extension yourself. But um, with one point three, I think they have to add that to the spec. Gradebook is the only um, tool that is getting stuff from these integrations that I know of. Yeah. Okay, Adrian, then thank you so much. So we'll revisit in a couple of weeks. Yeah, cool. Yep. Awesome. Right. And I know Tiffany uh, put some ideas in the chat. And yep. um, I, Josh, I assume you're going to capture those for Adrian. And I, I've uh, also I've had they went onto the Ethernet. Ethernet. Yeah. Also in Etherpad. Yeah. yeah. Oh, great. Perfect. Yeah, brilliant. That's great. That That's great. great. Okay. Yep. Thank, thank you, you so much. All right, let's uh, move on to um, our first JIRA, and I'm going to try to share my screen, I guess, to get presenter back. Okay, so we're going to head over to... Um, SAC 44013, I'll paste this link in the chat. It's also in the Etherpad if you want to follow along. And let me just open that up. And now I need to tell it to share that. This is me again. <laughs> Sorry. This is me again. This is my. Uh, this is my addition. This. Oh goodness me! I have too many. Oh great! Stop sharing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
maybe I won't share, although for the recording, it is nice to have that on the screen. But, but um, uh, disabling full screen maximize button by default. And this is Adrian's. So I see what you're saying now, Adrian. And so we're starting to get feedback from institutions that are upgrading to 20 that the full screen mode is leading to increased support issues. Um, it's persistent across logins and re oh, it refreshes so it doesn't go away. Users that don't understand the button end up in a bad state. Yeah. Okay. So let's see, yeah. we do have some comments in here. Yeah, just just that people are noticing it and having a problem with it. It seems to me that it should go away when you exit the tool. Yeah. And, you know, before you, because, you know, if you're refreshing, I mean, I would expect my full screen to disappear once I leave that tool and come back to it. This sounds like a really bad accessibility issue uh, that people are getting lost in uh, in the full screen mode. Now, most of the time when you have a full screen mode, there's some way to escape out of it and some notification at the top of the screen, like Adam is mentioning in this uh, JIRA, uh, that indicates yeah. how they get out of it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and so is there a the, button um, or something? Yeah, there is a button to, to get out of it, but it's, it's just a, a little button. There's no... I forget what it, hold on, I'm looking to see what ours does now. Um, there's not even a tool tip when you mouse over it. Well, there should at least be that, yeah. Um, and, and, and actually, you're, you're kind of stuck in that tool because when you go to full screen mode, you can't even see the left-hand navigation anymore. So you're kind of just stuck if you don't know to click the little um, button at the top right that takes you out of full screen mode. So we're yeah. one of the institutions that, that's had some users run into this and, and get think there's something wrong um, because you're, you have no way to navigate away from the page you're on except by clicking on that button or kind of just getting out entirely. <clears throat> You can't you can't press like the escape key or anything like other yeah yeah you can but you can. No, um, yeah escape key does work but there's no visual there's no visual cue to let you know that the escape key does that so yeah there there needs to be some visual cue and um and also a screen reader cue yeah yeah um <laughs> Yeah, the reason the reason um, the reason it persists. So this was initially done for uh, for Gradebook, right? And um, and when I, when I did it for Gradebook, I just thought, well, this makes sense just to have available for any tool, right? So you can just maximize any tool. But um, the reason that it persists is because in Gradebook, when you do things like sort, what you get is a refresh. It goes back to the server and uh, regenerates all the page content, and so. If you if you went full screen in Gradebook and you were trying to do something right, uh, literally you keep getting pulled out of full screen all the time. So that's why it persists. So it was <laughs> it's just one of those. Uh, I can draw a similar parallel to the tools column on the left. Yeah. So uh, in the past, the tools column. If you hit if you hit the tools column, whenever the page refreshed, you saw a flicker because we had some JavaScript in there which was basically rehiding the tools column based on the local storage. So I'm, I made a change to that so that the VM, the, or the, the actual portal actually renders it hidden in the first place. You didn't see the flicker. Well, this is a this is a recurrent problem in Sakai where you get these refreshes from tools, right? Which can can blow away any 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 kind of like visual stay that you've applied. So that's that's why it works the way it does. Just just for some background, it's it's the way Gradebook re refreshes a lot. But yeah, maybe this is an issue about just information for the user. I'm, I'm not, I'm not too sure. You know, um, yeah, like I, think, I think some tool tips, some, some sort of, some, you know, if you hover over the button that that makes it go I, into full screen. I don't know. 
I think there needs to be something similar to what you experience in most applications that have a full screen mode like Zoom and whatever, yeah, where there, there's a, a piece of text near the top that yeah. says you can get out of it by hitting escape. Oh, yes. You know, it's, it's always there um, in those kinds of applications. It's just up at the top that says yeah. that. And so whenever you arrive on a full screen um, page, then you have that information just sort of as a banner always at the top of the screen, kind of like your unpublished sites banner. I'm thinking something along those lines, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, which would just sort of persist at the top of the screen. And then, um, and then that would be there. And, and if a user navigates away and comes back to it, it's the first thing they encounter in the tab order and here as a screen reader user, you know, click to exit or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. That makes good sense. It shouldn't be too they hard exit to do Exit full either. screen mode, like a button up there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Adrian, do you want to capture that in the JIRA? I don't know if you, you need better notes than what I, <laughs> I just put we need better visual and accessible cues. Um, that's, that's fine. I can, I can, I can make some notes about that. That's, okay. not, not, I was going to comment. Okay, great, Tiffany. Go right ahead. Yeah. That's appreciated and helpful. Okay. Are we ready to move on to the next one, which I believe is also Adrian's? It is the Kai four four. Hold on, zero zero six, and I'll paste that into the chat. Would you like me to talk? Oh, talk sure. Thank you. Yeah, walk us through it. Right. So, so basically, this is another. This is another um, uh, kind of support ticket we've had um, inside Longsight, right? Where um, people are confused that when they when they go into grade, they go into grade an assignment um, where they know there's some kind of submission, right? They're not seeing. They're not seeing the document there until yeah. they click. Until they click something, right? And um, so we discussed this on the core call on the core call yesterday, right? So the kind of thrust was um, from you know from like from Chuck and that, right? It's like if there's one if there's one submission, you know, be it HTML or a PDF or whatever, he'd expect you to see that immediately, right? Without having to click something with a also with a visual indicator against the file name that that's what you're viewing, right? So in the new grade of the file name, the file name's to the right hand side and the previews to the left of that, right? So he said he'd like to see the PDF there, or whatever it is, right? With a little, you know, a little you know, bold on over it or whatever, right? Just to show that that's the active thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um but then the then people started debating about when there's multiple, what happens then, right? So it was it was very split. It was some people were saying if there's three, you know, items that have been submitted, then it shouldn't show any of them, right? What about something like I know in Box, for example, you get a previewer, and I think if there are multiple submissions, you can. Well, I know you can just X out of the current view and go open another one <clears throat> in preview. Um, yeah. And maybe that's the way. Or the arrow keys like we have in Jira when there are multiple screenshot attachments, you can just advance through them with arrows on the left or the right. Man, that's a good idea. Yeah. My question would be is what, what takes priority if you have both a document, an attached document, but there's also inline text <clears throat> that's been included. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and that, that was part of the debate yesterday. You know, how yeah. can you decide what's the most important thing to show first? Yeah. So. Yeah. And if there's no attachment, but there is inline, then that should be shown by default. Yeah. Right. Yeah, the, yeah. Pe people were kind of like uh, on the same hymn sheet about that. If there's just one thing, just just kind of show it, right? But it was the other, it was the other cases that everybody started having a debate about. So, <laughs> yeah. well, I think I would be inclined to prioritize the inline submission text over an attachment. Right. 
So let's let's just say there's there's inline submission and there's two attachments, right? So you just show you'd show the inline submission, and you'd highlight you'd highlight in the right hand side that that is what is being shown, right? So you'd have you'd right. have that in bold or whatever, right? And then you'd have the file names under that clickable as well, yeah, Some, something like that. Mm -hmm. Another another thing that somebody mentioned yesterday on the core call was maybe maybe if there's like multiple things in the actual document preview pane you have like a, a larger scale list of those things right so not so much that it shows it shows the first one and you can use arrows to move between them it just shows the list the clickable list of things actually in the document preview pane as well as in the right hand side but it's slightly bigger right so it's more obvious that there's some things to choose there I don't know. I mean, that's what do people think about that? You understand what I'm saying? So, like in the actual preview pane, you'll see you'll see like inline text, uh, you know, something dot doc or and something dot pdf, right? And you you can click them in there just like you can click them on the right, and then you'll see them. You'll see the actual thing in the pane. I'm not sure. I don't know really whether that's. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> I mean, I think what would be really cool was if you could do little thumbnail previews of all the attachments and then the user could select one. I have no idea how simple that would be or how hard. Yeah, um, that might be quite quite tricky with the, the way we're currently yeah. doing things. Um, it was just a thought. Yeah, no, no, it's a good thought. It's a good thought. Um, that that yeah. might be something for the future, though. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, we've we've got some. There's some extra. There's another feature that's um, that's in Master now, where we're actually using uh, LibreOffice to do the conversions to PDF. You know, like uh, so. But it, it 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 requires some. You know, you have to set up another kind of bit of infrastructure at your institution to to use that converter. But when you when you deploy that, you get far better. You know, far higher quality conversions. To, mm, uh, to, nice. to PDF, so that could be something we do uh, when we've explored that a bit more. I mean, it's, it didn't go into tw it could have gone into twenty, but literally, I'd only just done it, and I was a bit, I was a bit twitchy about just kind of shipping mm. it. But and mm -hmm. we'd like to, we'd like to deploy it alongside maybe with a few of our clients, perhaps, and, and um, you know, on a trial basis first and see see how it works. But maybe thumbnails will be something we can do with that. That might be, uh, you know, a, a more approachable using that. And Michael Green, I think MG is Michael Green. Yeah. Uh, suggests that you could do static type static icons for different file types rather than the thumbnails uh, initially. Um, or, you know, it's just also another suggestion. I kind of like that thumbnail idea. But I'm I'm, you know, I wonder if some mock-ups might different, you know, of different approaches might be helpful to you and to us. Um, Maybe, yeah. And I don't know who would do those, but. Um, well, could ask Chanel is this something you were trying to get into 21 before the freeze, Adrian, or is this a longer term? This, this, this needs, this needs dealing with, uh, well, you know, from a long side perspective, we need to, we need to get a fix for this pretty soon because we've got a couple of clients that are, um, not liking this, not liking yeah. this at all. So, we may do that as a local patch for uh, for our clients. Uh, you know, so that doesn't have to drive you know the time scale. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm tending towards you know, if there's one thing, if there's one thing, then then we should we show that one thing. You know, if there's multiple things, then maybe right. show the inline inline text and the list. You know? Yeah, as long as there's a way to close it yeah. and select something else if it's there. Yeah. Um, and close it and yeah. see the inline text. I, you know, I, I like the idea. Have it embedded in the screen with the inline text, you know, in its own mm -hmm. previewer. I, um, I like the idea of having um, just the first thing, the first attachment show up by default. And then have an arrow at the top of like where that previewer is, 
have sort of an arrow to cycle through the other attachments, like, you know, next attachment or something like that, a button uh, at the top next and previous attachment. Uh, so that you would you would cycle through that let's say there's three attachments so we have how to edit my profile PDF is the first one and then uh, how to visit my home site is the second one uh, so you'd have the the visible one would be the first one how to edit my profile when you arrive on the page and then you'd have at the top of that like uh, sort of a banner or you know just a a button that says you know see next attachment. And you click on that, and you then you see the how to visit my homepage or something like that. Uh, and then there would be when you're on that second one, you'd have a pre see previous, you know, appear because you could go back to the first one. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're, we're recording this, right? This is yes, this is we are. <laughs> right, excellent. excellent. I'm not sure when the recording will be available. But yeah. uh, and so you we've thrown some ideas at you and, um, you know, happy to um, revisit this if if you've um, if you're heading down an approach and just want some more yeah. feedback. No, the great ideas. Yeah, thanks. That's great. Really useful. Great. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's see, we're going to move on to 34622, pasting the link for you in the chat. It's also on Etherpad. And um, Tiffany, why don't you walk us through this one since you added it here for us? Sure. Um, we had an instructor run into this issue recently where he was trying to import uh, some quizzes. He came from another institution that used Canvas. And he was trying to import some quizzes that he had uh, into uh, tests and quizzes. And he couldn't do that um, because tests and quizzes has an older version of, um, of the QTI import than Canvas is using. And in fact, a lot of systems now, uh, we had another instructor recently who had a similar problem and she was using a um, publisher uh, test bank. And so I think with more online learning, this is going to be a bigger problem more quickly um, where instructors who are using publisher test banks are not going to be able to import their content that they've created in the publisher, um, you know, yeah. whatever they, they use uh, for their testing service. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we definitely want to uh, be competitive in that or we're going to lose customers. <laughs> Um, right. So I, I really think that uh, someone needs to address this. This JIRA is two years old, I think. Three. Uh, three years old. Three years old. And um, so uh, I I'd really hope that someone would address this soon so that uh, our users can import their content. I mean, this one instructor had literally hundreds of tests that he could not use his questions uh, without recreating them individually in the system and because canvas doesn't have a print version uh, for whatever weird reason uh, he couldn't even use uh, markup text to bring them in so it was really frustrating for him yeah yeah i guess the question is can we make this a priority in the community to remain competitive with people coming from canvas schools i'd make it a bug to start with rather than a feature request. I know that's contentious, but um, I'd make, I'd, you yeah. know, if this, is, if this is something that's going to literally, uh, you know, contribute to us, like losing, you know, like adoptees or whatever, adopters, then <laughs> I think it should be, should be, a, should be marked as a bug. So I don't seem to be able to edit the issue type. I think you've got to re I think you've got to remake it. I think. I um, think, I think, yeah, there's something weird about feature requests and tasks converting uh, to bugs. Isn't it a move feature? To oh, it the, can the only type? be yeah. moving this issue. Okay, let's see what happens when I try to do that. Move it. Oh, maybe out of the Samago project. No, it's it's in the SAC project. Yeah, it's in it's in this, SAC. So. Current project, new project, current issue type, new issue type. Got it. So we want it to be a bug. I think I think so. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't know whether QTI two is stable yet. I mean, it's 
It's been out 15 years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, I'm looking at the QTI website. It looks like QTI 3 is actually due out this month. <laughs> Of course. Yeah, that's so that's what I was looking at when I, as I commented in that um, Jira there, three is the latest version. Um, it looks like some of the stuff that our instructors were trying to import was in two point something. Um, but uh, I think we should definitely be supporting uh, whatever the most recent version is, if if possible. And if not, the the next to most recent version that the majority of um, of inst or not institutions of uh, systems are using. My question is: Are they are they backward compatible? The specs. So if we support QTI three, in, uh, you know, in this this work or whatever, then and most vendors are are using two point two, then are we closing the door in some way? And, you know, well, we we need to be able to migrate our content forward and continue to reuse our content as well. Uh, yeah. So, you know, if instructors have exported their QTI 1.1 or whatever we're using now, 1.2 quizzes, uh, they need to be able to continue to use them in whatever version yeah. uh, we move to. So, um, you know, I it, if it's not backwards compatible, we're going to need to have two versions in there. Yeah, I multiple. Think. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah we're going to yeah. need to have multiple because we need to keep our... Um, our existing content functional. Yeah. yeah. Well, one thing I think would be really useful uh, to put on this ticket, if anybody's got, you know, anybody's got this kind of data is, um, you know, what versions our competitors are, are using, you know, particular cases of where somebody's tried to export from, I don't know, whatever, you know, desire to learn or whatever, right? And Well, am I showing my ignorance and thinking that more modern versions of it would <clears throat> would accommodate earlier import you, styles? You never know with IMS stuff. You really don't. Yeah, that's our question. We don't yeah. know. You never know. Yeah. Okay. So you can't assume that then? No, you definitely okay. can't assume that. I mean, QTI 3 may be, may be uh, a more elegant, you know, and refined um, kind of like thing altogether, you know, so... There may seem to be less tags in it and stuff than than the older releases because they've managed to you know like hone it so so then you'd need some kind of conversion tool or whatever right or we support each major version so qti one two and three in sakai which is probably what will have to happen i think well, I, ims lists the products that are certified on their website and they um, they list the 888 certified QTI 2.1, and only one so far, three. Three isn't officially released yet. So. Yeah, right. Um, it's basically, it looks like everything is just 2.1. If you support 2.1, then you're good. Right. And they don't do certification anymore for the one series. Yeah, so 2.1 would be, would be the first target then. It sounds like, mm -hmm. yeah. It doesn't look like they even have two two on the uh, the list for whatever reason either. And what do you, what do you think, Matt, about making this a book? I mean, I've it, already it's done it. gonna, <laughs> I think it's going to take a lot of work. So whether it's a bug or a feature, it doesn't really matter. It's someone's going to have to. I feel like to get this working, you're probably someone's gonna have to like basically upgrade how the QTI imports working in Samago. And I, I found a library a while ago about uh, that was doing this in Java, but they they, they abandoned the uh, the code. But the, so there's already code out there, I think, for QTI two one in a library that is usable, but it's no longer supported. Right. Um, oh, that's, that's something. I forget which uh, um, was QTI works. I think was this library. IMS QTI two point one the development library. So basically, if you if you're able to like put this library in, but yeah, the problem is this library had thousands of commits, and it's no longer. They they basically said they're no longer right. I'm going to really support it anymore. So that's unfortunate. 
I mean, yeah. It just kind of like, but it kind of gave me the idea of how much work's going to be involved to do it, do a brand new QTI 2.1, or even to just take a library and use an unsupported product. I, I don't, I don't know what's a better idea. Yeah. Thing is about things about IMS stuff. You never know until you delve into the spec. <laughs> yeah. It all seems so simple. <laughs> Well, I did um, dig around in some of the files that uh, the instructor exported. I don't know if I still have them. I may have deleted them, unfortunately. But um, and, I, and I wouldn't want to post that on a public JIRA because it's somebody's actual exam. But um, uh, the files were fairly different um, in the, the XML. Yeah. And I noticed they also had support for question types that we currently you know, that currently exist in Sakai, but we do not have import support for, uh, like the hotspot, uh, right. whatever it's called, image map uh, thing. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we were ahead. We were ahead of the QTI spec then. <laughs> our types, our questions were too exotic for QTI then at the time. <laughs> QTI 1.2. <laughs> Right. Okay, so I've added a couple of the links that people have been posting in chat. I posted one to the QTI versions on IMS Global. I pointed to the version that Canvas support. So if if you folks have any other, um, uh, Adrian, there's some more. Well, I don't know if you're going to be working on this, but um, or Matt Jones, if you want to add any of those other links in the chat to the JIRA to, to um, so, so you don't have to look, uh, <clears throat> you might want to go ahead and do that. Yeah, yeah. I added, the, but, added the, J, the JQTI plus and yeah, it says the note, this project is now ended and no further work is currently planned. So it, I, I looked at it, it seems like it'd be, it could be a really good starting place. If the license is good. But it, there is a ton of code there, and it's going to take some time to, to just go through it and kind of make it compatible with Sakai. But it would yeah. be it would be a good. It, it's 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 helpful. Yeah, it's. Yeah. I think it. I think it is important. So yeah. others on the call, if you want to go to this Jira, log in and vote for it. That might be a good idea. Add your comments if you have any, and. Um, we can upvote it <clears throat> to get it on somebody's um, development list. Thank Before you. Before we move on, does anybody know would better common cartridge support also accomplish this goal? Because I know we've had conversations around that as well, mm -hmm. and I don't know those two specs well enough. Uh, I don't think so because no. um, because the format of these files is is very very different. And Samago won't accept them regardless of which method. We tried uh, doing the common cartridge and lessons import as well. I'm pretty yeah, sure that you you embed you embed QTI in common cartridge anyway. I think. Do you know what I mean? But, yeah, um, yeah, right. And they're, what, they're different specs, and and yeah. Sakai supports common cartridge up to one three, and one four is is not really used at all. So one two is the most common common cartridge. So. Mm -hmm. You'd have to put this in there. So, Tricia, if I vote on the um, the Jira that has the feature request, will that carry over when you make it a bug? I've already made it a bug, so you might want to refresh first. Okay. I mean, I don't think it'll matter. Your vote will still happen, I think. Okay. Yeah, ten but yes, it, it will carry over. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it did. Okay. Thank you. All right, we have five minutes um, before the top of the hour, and let's see. <clears throat> we might be able to squeeze in one more. We can try. I'm going to copy this link for you and paste it in the chat to SAC 43938. Uh, Tiffany? Uh, that, that's actually a bigger one. We probably want to take a look at a different one <laughs> okay, you for the last five you. minutes. Do you um, have another one to recommend? Yeah, let me see. Um, oh, uh, the sign up one four three three two seven. 
I think is uh, would be helpful to talk about. Okay, and we really literally just have a couple of minutes. Yeah, um, so when you create a sign up meeting, uh, you can't edit the, the sites or groups to which it was released. And we've had a couple of instructors run into this where um, they created a sign up meeting for one course, uh, like their office hours, and then they realized that they also wanted to release it to their other course. Um, but you can't edit the uh, group releases in the sign up meeting. Um, so they had to recreate the entire event and manually move over uh, all of the students who had already signed up in the first class uh, to the new version of the event, which is a pain. Um, so, uh, so I was wondering if, if a feature could be developed to allow ad additional groups to be added on an existing um, event. Now, obviously, you'd have to lock down the previous ones in that event to not let them be removed, um, but, uh, but to add more um, on editing the sign-up event meeting. Mm. Does this come up a lot for folks? I, that's a good question. I don't know how many people are using the sign-up tool, but we've had a few instructors who ran into it. We have, okay. Yeah. Anybody else using sign-up and have any thoughts on this? I, we have some instructors using sign up, but I'm not sure if we've ever had anybody um, using the other sites part of it. Okay. We would have run into this. Right. It's also applicable to multiple groups within the same site. So, like if you have um, three rosters in a site and you've added one roster and then suddenly you want to add a new roster, like that class's wait list or something like that. Um, you can't uh, add on uh, an additional roster uh, or group. So, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't sound like it's really a um, high demand. Um, yeah, I appreciate that we're running into the problem. So, um, but I, I think it could be a value added thing, though, and the, it might be more usable if it was more friendly. Yeah, for sure. But other than agreeing that, yes, it would be nice if this um, were enhanced, I don't know if we have anything else to add to this JIRA. But if folks uh, are interested in it, again, you can vote for it. Put comments in if you have any. And we're at 10.59, so I'm, I'm going to uh, quickly wrap us up here. Um, sorry, Tiffany, we really didn't give that much attention, but um, I think we need to move on. Uh, so quickly, we have uh, next meeting is August 19th. We will um, revisit the dashboard discussion again with Adrian. And uh, we'll probably also have time to do a couple of JIRAs in there. So some of the ones that we didn't pick up this time, we'll do then. And uh, September 6th is open uh, if people are available <laughs> at, with all of their back to school fun. Uh, we'll, we'll just leave that open and uh, uh, see if, if we're available to meet then. Um, and otherwise, I'm going to just call us adjourned and thank you all for your interest and your feedback and your participation. Yep. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.